This is set up so it gives you an opportunity where you can don't have to practice the whole entire thing, but you can practice in stages and put together on here something that you can do with your dog so the judge can actually see the brain of this dog. They're going to see the confirmation ring and they're going to be able to do the exam and find everything they need as far as length of bone, angles of bones, coat texture, any physical attributes like that. But what they need to do to make a decision to say this is the best dog for this breed, they need to see the brain. Mm -hmm. They need to see the dog do something. Now, this crate represents stage zero and stage 10. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Wait. Good boy, yes. Yes. Is it time? Is it time? Yeah, it's gonna be time. Oh yes, it is. There we go. Good. Head straight. Good, head straight, good. Okay. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Come on, let's go. Okay. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Easy. Mm -hmm. This is where the, you're going to work with the dog and let them know, okay, we're going to go have some fun. We're going to go in the ring. It's Disneyland. You're getting them pumped up. You're getting excited. You're doing the head straight, letting them know you got this. Nothing to worry about right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Anytime you're in the presence of that dog, you don't want to give up that leadership. You want them to know that you're in charge. And it's also 10 because after all this is done, you're going to come back over here. Once the dog's put in the crate, then you can scream, yell, kick things and whatever you want to do. Okay. Okay. So we leave here. We're pumped. We're excited. We have good communication. We're not going to just drag the dog over to the next stage because that would be giving up that leadership. So I'm shaking my hand, palm direction. In a real world situation, Stage one, which represents right outside the ring, can be hectic. Mm -hmm. You can have people who want to crowd up right here, gather right here, dogs, kids, whatever. Um, in the beginning, you want to train for this and make it simple. Later on, you can start to add distractions, put some stuffed animals, anything with sight, scent, and sound oh, okay. can be a distraction. Okay. So at stage one, you're gonna be here ready to go in. They're gonna say number five, whatever your number is. You have seconds to get this dog to do something to let them know that we're about ready to go in and work. So maybe just a quick twirl, a high five, Something where you're the leader asking the dog to do something so that puts you in that leadership role. After we get this dog to do a quick little trick, then I shake my hand, let the dog know we're going to come into the ring. I have good communication. As I enter a ring, the dogs usually scan this ring. So you want to shake this hand to, to tell them again to focus on this hand right here. And we're going to lead them to stage two. At stage two, I can slow them down, get in front, and do another trick. If you're in the best of breed competition, you will have plenty of time at stage two, so the judge will be checking armbands and checking everybody in and stuff like that. If you're a singleton, you may only have about as much time as what you had at stage one. Mm, okay. If you're lucky enough to get just a few dogs inside here, it still gives you more time so you can do a more complex trick here. Mm -hmm. And I would suggest writing down the trick you're gonna do at stage one, a couple of different tricks you would do at stage two, because okay. again, sometimes you'll have more time than others. So let's say we have some time here. I want this dog to leap up into the air, maybe give it a treat up here, do a twirl, something mm -hmm. that as we start studying the breed, we learn 
what this dog has to have as far as power, energy, focus, mm -hmm. what it says in the breed standard to do the job that it is bred to do. Mm -hmm. So if they have to be athletic, if they have to be agile, mm -hmm. you know, these are some things that you can add here with to a list that. of tricks and stuff like that. Okay. Then your judge usually will come out when they're ready to judge, come out towards the center of the ring, mm -hmm. and here's where we're gonna control this energy. So I've done my trick. My judge is ready to look at all these dogs. So now I'm going to lean forward, walk backwards, and slowly come into this nice free stack at the end of this six-foot lead. Mm -hmm. By doing that, my judge sees this dog can stand on its own, mm -hmm. where the rest of your competition is probably trying to hand stack, which most dogs don't like to be hand stacked unless you have a really good connection. So you've got feet going in all kinds of different directions. Mm -hmm. Here, your dog is standing on its own looking spectacular. Mm -hmm. So I don't really like to, at stage two, do a hand stack, even if the rest of the whole crowd is, is doing that. Okay. okay, so from stage two, the next stage we have is stage three. Stage three is a gating stage. So you're not gonna be stationary right there. Mm -hmm. But what I do at a gating stage is I figure out where my judge is viewing and I give them the appropriate gate for where they're at. Like for instance, if your judge is right out here, mm -hmm. your judge is gonna see the side gate. Mm -hmm. So I have to really concern myself with the amount of reach, drive, and that center convergence at stage three. So as I get started here, and I start to gate through where stage three is, I make sure my stride is appropriate for the breed. And then a lot of times, if you watch your judge ahead of time, you'll see that they stop looking at a dog at a certain point mm -hmm. and go to the next dog. Yeah, I see that. Before my judge, let's say it's this blue thing right here. Mm -hmm. If my judge stops looking at the dogs there, yeah. I've already shown my judge good gates right here. Okay. So. Before I get here, I may do another play with a purpose. Oh, okay. So maybe a nice little leap to show the athleticism of this dog. Okay. I want my judge to look at my dog a little bit longer than most of the other dogs. Okay. Okay, so that takes care of stage three. Then I will normally have to wait over here at stage eight. Okay. okay. So I'm gonna gate around, come over to stage eight, and at stage eight, it could be here, it could be here. Mm -hmm. We'll wait here until the judge tells us to go over for the exam. Now, if you're the first dog, you'll probably go straight over to the exam. But this stage here, if you have an opportunity, you wanna do the exact same thing you did here as you did over at stage two. Mm -hmm. So you may have a little bit longer to do some kind of a trick or some kind of a play with a purpose right here, mm -hmm. and then go into a nice free stack, bring that energy down, and now the judge will say, okay, take the dog to the next step. So as you're gating around over here, you have two other stages ahead of you. You have stage four, which is called on deck. This means you're not actively being judged mm -hmm. or examined, but you're the next one. Mm -hmm. So you wanna find some way to play with your dog, create that connection, have this dog excited about doing the job and being in the ring so it doesn't get bored. Mm -hmm. And while this judge is going over this dog right here, you don't wanna be obnoxious, you don't wanna be disruptive, mm -hmm. but you do wanna create some kind of a little trick or something here that kinda of catches the judge's eye out of the corner of the eye. Mm -hmm. You ever been in the ring before and you're standing there and all of a sudden somebody does something cool and you look over mm -hmm. and it catches your eye? Right, yeah. This is what your goal is right here. Some kind of movement. That Some kind of might... movement, okay. you know, something mm -hmm. neat. So then you come over here and you're at stage five. So this is the point here where you're going to become that tour guide, mm -hmm. where you're going to really know that breed standard and you're going to be laying out and presenting the ear the top line, setting the feet, getting ready so that the judge can see this dog. And we'll go into this in more detail later, but these are some things that you wanna accomplish here. You may even throw some bait, stand off to the side so the judge can see a beautiful expression and outline mm -hmm. where you're not disruptive there. 
and then you present the dog so the judge can come over, look at the bite, and check all the parts that they need to see. Okay. Okay? So that's here at stage five. Then you have stage six. Stage six is going to be a pattern. So for the pattern, you're either going to do a down and back, you're going to do a triangle, Moby. you may do a reverse triangle, or you could do an L. Wow. Depending on whatever the judge and asks you, you to loose. do. That's beautiful. So at stage six, you want to figure out something that you can do here. Where your primary goal is foot placement. So the judge needs to see your dog with its foot placement when viewed from the rear, viewed from the front, and viewed from the side. Mm -hmm. So you have to know what that is for your breed. Now, when I come back or I'm down on the corner, I may do some kind of a play with a purpose so the judge can see that this dog can actively do the job that it was bred to do. Like for instance, let's say I have a cattle dog. If I have a cattle dog, I may be over in that corner and I duck a little bit when I come back to the judge mm. and that'll show that this dog could actually make a quick turn and duck just like if it was working cattle. Mm, okay. So for each breed, you wanna find something either over there or coming back to here that will show that play with a purpose. And that's what you would write down on six. Okay. And then you come back here, you practice working with baiting judges versus non-baiting judges. Mm -hmm. So you have that spectacular finish that just burns an image into the judge's brain. Okay, after you do station six, then the judge is gonna say, take this dog around. So that's when you would gate away from that stage there. You're coming around to this corner here which is the exact same thing that you did at stage three. Mm -hmm. okay. So when you get past this part here and you see where the judge stops looking, I'd still again do that little yeah. leap or something. Okay. And now you're all lined up over here at this stage, at stage eight for the finale. Okay. The finale is when the judge is standing like where you're at looking at all these dogs mm -hmm. and saying, okay, which dog am I gonna pick for what? I need a best of breed, I need a best of winners, best of opposite, select dog, select bitch, and whatever else down the line. Mm -hmm. So at this point here, you're not gonna leave it to chance. Mm -hmm. At this point, you want to show a nice position too, so this dog is standing on its own, looking nice and regal or whatever your breed standard outlines. The judge is going down the line, and as they go down the line, they may see another dog that they like out there. You're not gonna leave, be satisfied with just this. You may now pull this dog into that position two, three-quarter angled into the ring, throw that treat, step back like this. When the judge turns around, they see your dog standing out here by themselves. Anytime the judge isn't watching, if you feel that this judge has not made that decision yet, mm -hmm. you want to step up to the plate and try a different position. Okay. If you watch the video um, training the dogs for winner's photos, yeah. it actually breaks down and teaches you how to do five different positions right here. Here we are, the judge makes their decision. If you win, when you win, you're going to get super excited and pay this dog for all the hard work. Woohoo! Good job! And be excited to head over to the next stage, which is stage nine. So, stage nine, you're excited, you're pumped, everybody's congratulating you, whatever color you got right there. You still want to keep things going. Okay. So, you're doing a high five. You may get the ribbon or rosette from the judge, hand that to your dog, let your dog carry that out of the ring like a trophy. Mm -hmm. So always want to let this dog know what an amazing job to that they did. To keep his energy up and exactly. showing himself basically. And keep yeah. him wanting to come in here day after, after day, day after day right. and, and, not, and yeah. not get that dog show burnout. Right. Okay. okay, so whether you came from here where you didn't win or you came from here where you won something, it's still not over yet. Mm. You still have to get this dog to the crate. Okay. So woohoo, lots of excitement, good communication. You're leading this dog over to the crate. So now we're at stage 10. 
I give, I give this dog a head straight, give him a treat, trophy toy, something of high value right there, pop them in the crate. As soon as they go into that crate, now I can breathe and cry <laughs> yeah. or, cheer or cheer or go break something. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so one of the things that I have in my head is that when I'm at stage one, this is my only shot to win this show. Mm. When I'm at stage two, this is my only shot to win mm. this show. So can... We're at stage three, all, at every one of these stages, mm. if you put that kind of effort into this, you're going to be working harder and looking better than all the other dogs out there. Okay. 